So welcome to College Algebra. Today is the ninth. <clears throat> so last time uh, we were talking about uh, Horner's scheme to evaluate a polynomial, and that also amounts to a scheme to perform uh, division. And using Horner's scheme to divide is called synthetic division. And now we're in section 5.5. And this is called uh, zeros of polynomials. OK. <clears throat> so here is a question. Completely factor f of x is x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 30. So uh, if I was to if I was to stop right here, then you you would be a little bit out of luck. You would you wouldn't quite know what to do, because if this was a quadratic, then we'd have means to proceed. You could use the product and sum rule. You could use the the quadratic formula. There's a lot of things you could do, but this is not a quadratic. It's a cubic. So with the with the question. As stated, you're a little bit out of luck, so now I'm going to add one piece of information. Uh, given that x equal to negative 2 is a 0. of f of x. So this red information I claim that it tells you how to proceed. It tells you what to do. So what do we do then? Divide. Divide. Right. This, this red information, the red information tells us, therefore, so this, this tells us, therefore, x plus 2 is a factor. which means that we can proceed by dividing by x plus 2 to get rid of that factor. So in particular, we will use Horner's scheme. So 1, negative 6, negative 1, and 30. And where are we going to evaluate? At negative 2. So we're going to evaluate at negative 2. Now, before we go anywhere, before we do anything at all, we already know what it's going to evaluate to. What's it going to evaluate to? Zero. I mean, that's what, that's what the red information says. It says that when you do this table, you're going to get a zero right here. So then what's the point of doing this at all, then? Right, to find the quotient. The quotient is what we're looking for. So we already know this is going to be a zero. And if, it, if it's not a zero, if we carry this out and it's not a zero, that means that we made an error somewhere. OK, so let's carry it out. So this one is carried down. Now that it's carried down, you alternate multiplies and adds. So multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And we're so happy about getting that zero because that means that we did it right. So I'll make it a happy face. So that tells us <coughs> something about f. That tells us one of the factors. What's one of the factors? That's one of the factors. So the fact that we evaluated here and got a 0 here 
tells us that this is one of the factors. But it also tells us another factor. What's another one? Very good. x squared minus 8x plus 15. Okay, so have we answered the exercise? Not yet, right? In, in what way have we not answered the exercise? It's not, factored. it's not completely factored. So this has, the fact that this is not factored means that there's more work to do. Because that's not completely factored. <coughs> Okay. However, it's a quadratic, and we, for like two or three weeks, went over quadratics. So you have, you have tools to, to deal with this. So can you factor that? How does it factor? Very good. So this one, this factor just persists. And then can you think of two numbers whose product is positive 15 and whose sum is negative 8? Sure you can. So... So, okay, so any question about this exercise? I'd like to point out that if I had not given you the red information at the beginning, you'd have been a little stuck. You wouldn't have know, known where to start. So now, what the, the main point of today is that we're going to do this, we're going to completely factor some polynomials, but I'm going to not give you that red information. Instead, I'm going to give you a tool that lets you figure out what that red information is. Okay. <clears throat> so any question about the opener? Okay. So this is the new tool for today. It is called the rational zeros theorem. So let, let uh, f of x be a polynomial such that, so f of x needs to be of the form a n x to n plus dot 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 plus a2x squared plus a1x plus a0. So this just means any old polynomial. But now we need some requirements about the uh, coefficients. <coughs> we need a n, the leading coefficient, to be not 0. We need a0, the trailing coefficient, to be not zero, or the constant coefficient. And we also need ai, all of the coefficients, need to be integers. So suppose that we have such a polynomial. All the coefficients are integers. The leading coefficient is not zero. The, the constant coefficient is not zero. The rational zeros of f of f of x, if any, because there no there don't need to be any. The rational zeros of f of x, if any, must take the form. plus or minus a factor of the leading coefficient divided by a factor 
of the constant coefficient. Uh, no, these are backwards, or upside down. The A0 needs to be on the top. Okay, so let's see what this means. So for example, <coughs> list all possible rational zeros for f of x is x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 30. That's the same one that we did on the previous exercise. So let's use the rational zeros theorem to list out all the possible factors. Okay, so this would be, they must be of the form plus or minus something over something. So what goes in the numerator? Factors of No, factors of 30. 30. Oh, 30. Factors of 30. And then what goes in the denominator? Factors of 1. Okay, so it's, it's always a constant coefficient, factors of the, of the constant coefficient, divide by factors of the leading coefficient. So just remember that our convention is that when, when there is no coefficient, it's understood to be 1. <coughs> okay, so then what are the factors of 30? And then what are the factors of 1? One? 1. So now I'm, I'm going to leave one of these off for a minute. Because I want you to think about um, how to make sure your list is complete. Okay, so for, every, for everything in this list, there has to be something that complements it, that give, that whose, whose product with that other one makes it 30. So look, 1 and 30. Uh, 3 and 10, 5 and 6, and 2 is too lonely, right? So, oh, we must be missing one. So what one are we missing? 15. Okay, so does everyone see that that's how you check and make sure you don't inadvertently leave one off? Okay, so now let's write down all the possible combinations. So these are the all, all the possible numerators, and these are all the possible denominators. So that's nice, the fact that there's only one possible denominator, and also that the only possible denominator is 1. That's extremely nice, and that's one of the benefits of having a monic polynomial. That means that the rational zeros, if any, must all be integers. That's nice. Okay, so then the possibilities are plus or minus 1. 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, or 30. So how many possibilities are in this list? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 16. 16. Why 16? Because it's plus or minus. Right. So the positive version of all of these, the negative version of all of these. So there's 16 possibilities. Now, on the previous exercise, we actually did factor that polynomial. So what zeros did that polynomial actually have? 5, 3, and negative 2. Do you observe that all of those are in this list? They're all in this list. OK. So our technique, our technique is going to be that I'm not going to give you this red information. Rather, you're going to make a list 
and then you're going to start guessing as fast as possible. Okay, so then if there's 16 possibilities, that means that, okay, hopefully, <laughs> on average, it'll only take you eight guesses, right? <laughs> Supposing you guess randomly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Uh, what am I doing? So let's do this. So list all possible rational zeros. And the polynomial is f of x is 2x to 4. Uh, minus 5x to 3 plus x squared minus 4. <coughs> okay. So now it'll be uh, it'll be plus or minus what go what kind of thing goes in the numerator? Factors of what? Very good. So I agree that the constant term is negative 4, but I'm just going to write 4. Why am I just going to write 4? Yeah, because we're doing plus or minus here, so it, doesn't, it, won't, it will not end up mattering. Uh, and then over a factor of what? Of 2. So that's plus or minus. Now what are the factors of 4? 1, uh, 2, and 4. So now let's, let's check and make sure we didn't leave any out. Okay, so 1 pairs with what? Four. With 4. What does 2 pair with? Two. Itself, right? 2 pairs with itself because 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, and then what are the factors of 2? One, 2. 1 and 2. So now what we need to do is we need to make all possible combinations. So we could take the denominator to be 1. So that could be plus or minus 1, 2, and 4. So that's when we take the denominator to be 1. And then when, when we take the denominator to be, to be 2, it could be half, 2 over 2, 4 over 2. But there's duplicates in this list now. What are the duplicates? Right, 1 is the same as 2 over 2, okay, so, so we can remove that duplication, and 2 is the same as 4 over 2, so we can remove that duplication. So, there are, so the possibilities are 1, 2, 4, half, and then duplicate, duplicate. So how many possibilities are there? 8. 8 possibilities. Any question about this? Okay, so now we're going to combine the new thing with the old things. So completely factor completely factor 4x cubed f of x is 4x cubed uh, minus 3x minus 1. And on the first exercise, I went on to say, given that blah, 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 blah. But now I'm not saying that. So what do we do? Right, same, same. Uh, we need to find the candidates. So the rational root, or the rational zero theorem. Candidates. So that would be plus or minus 
factors of which number? Right, factors in the numerator, uh, factors of one in the numerator, and factors of four in the denominator. So that's plus or minus. So the factors of one are just one. And what are the factors of four? One, two, and four. So that means that the list of all possibilities is plus or minus one, half, and a fourth. So there's six possibilities. There's six possibilities. Are these possible zeros? These are possible zeros. But remember that last time we, we established that zeros are equivalent to factors. Yeah. So for example, if 5 was a zero, then what's a factor? Negative. X minus 5. Right? If negative 7 is a zero, then what's a factor? X plus 7. X plus seven. So these are candidate zeros, and also they are, they are also telling you candidate factors. So now you just start guessing, more or less. So if one is in the list, you should always start with that, because th nothing is easier than that. But I'm going to not start with one, because it actually is a zero. <laughs> so I want to not start with it, so I can show you what it's like to not get it right. So we're going to start guessing, and how will we know if we've guessed correctly? If we get a zero, right? So then I'm going to guess negative one, and what goes on the top here? Four, zero, negative Very good. And where did that z where did this zero come from? X yeah, there's no x squareds. So now I'm going to guess. So you carry down this. So four, and then now you alternate, multiply, and adds. So multiply, add, multiply, add. Uh, wait a second. Negative one. <coughs> what? What? What did? I, oh, wait a second. No. Multiply, add. Is negative one? Wait a second. I've made an error somewhere. Oh, this right here. Yeah, that's the error I made. <laughs> I didn't copy it down right. So this, that, that's a, a copying error. <clears throat> okay, so then now, negative one, and then add, and get a two. So we guessed negative one. <laughs> negative two, thank you. I'm having all manner of problems today. So negative two. <clears throat> So did we guess correctly? No. No. So, oh, we're so sad. Got a little sad face there. OK, now you might say, oh, well, that was a waste. Well, not really, because there was only six possibilities. And now there's how many possibilities? Five. Now there's five. So you crossed one off the list. OK. No, you crossed negative one off the list. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> So uh, now what would you like to try? One. Negative one over four. Negative a fourth? OK, we'll try one. OK. Uh, so four, zero, negative three, negative one. So we'll try that. OK, so carry this down and then alternate multiplies and adds. So multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and Yay, we got a zero. I'm so happy about that. I'm going to make it a smiley face. Terrific. So that means that we guessed correctly on the second try. So what does that tell us then? That one is a zero. And it tells us that one is a zero. So we know one of the factors. What's one of the factors? X minus one is a factor. And that's good. But we can do even better, because we also know the other factor. What's the other factor? 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Yes. So specifically, we know this because of two things. We got a 0 
and we plug and we got a zero by plugging in one. So the fact that these two things we plugged in one and got zero means that x minus one is a factor. But even better than that, also, it tells us that the other factor is this quotient. Okay, so any question about getting to this position? Okay, so now, now, have we answered the question? No, we haven't answered the question. We haven't answered the question because why? It's not completely factored. It's not completely factored. We have yet to factor that quadratic. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, ec that, that won't work. X plus 2 times X plus 2. Oh, yeah. Ah, it is going to be that. So, so, but how are we going to figure it out? So we've got to figure it out, right? Not magic. We've got to, got to do it. So what do you think? We can use the product sum thingy. We could use the quadratic formula. Or, hey, we could use exactly <laughs> what we just did, couldn't we? We could do exactly what we just did. So let's try uh, a new list. So we want to factor this quadratic, so it'll be plus or minus factors of 1, factors of 1 over factors of 4. So that's plus or minus the same as above. So plus or minus 1 uh, half and 1 fourth. So how many candidates are there now? Six. Actually, there's less. Why? So why are there less? So this would be negative 1, positive 1, negative half, positive half and negative a fourth, positive a fourth. So that's six things, but I claim actually there's just five. Right? It, negative one couldn't be one of them, right? This one is already off the list. Because if negative one wasn't a factor of this, it's definitely not a factor of that either. Right? It's just like saying, take the number 30. Is seven, is seven a factor of 30? No. If you were to divide 30 by 2, then you have 15. Is 7 a factor of 15? No, because it wasn't a factor of 30. Okay, so this one's out. So there's really just five possibilities. Okay, so which one do you want to try? There, there isn't a 2. <laughs> okay, so now let's start guessing. Try half. And what numbers go right here? So let me write something. I'm going to write something, and you tell me about what I've written. So did I do it right? <laughs> I'm supposing that means not right. No, look, I copied them. Right, I even, I even did the negative, so I copied it right. Right, we're only interested in this now. We're not interested in this up here anymore. We're interested in this. So, Shouldn't it still work though? It will work. It will work, but it'll give you a different quotient. That would be like factoring 30 and saying, well, 30 is 2 times 15, and it's also 5 times 6. But you forgot about the first time you factored it. Okay, so 4, 4, uh, 1. Okay, so let's see. Did, so we're just making guesses now. So let's see if we guess correctly. So carry this down and then multiply, add, multiply, add. So did we guess correctly? No. Nope. Oh, that's so sad. But it's not the end of the world. So what have we, what have we accomplished then? Yeah, we removed this one. 
So that one's off the list. Now there's just four possibilities. Now what do you want to guess? Negative one. You want to guess negative half. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so carry this down. Four. And then multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. So ding, ding, ding. We're so happy about that. <clears throat> so that means that we know that uh, because negative half is a zero, what's one of the factors? One half. X plus one half. So therefore, we know that f of x is x plus one half. So that's one of the factors, but what's the other factor? 4x plus 2. So have I factored f correctly then? Okay, I could fact yeah, I could factor I could pull out a common coefficient. But is this the correct is this the correct answer? Well, what do you mean x minus 1? There was x plus half and there was 4x plus 2. Ah, that one at the beginning, right? Also, did you notice that this is just really not my style to leave the asymmetric horizontal space? So, however, I, need, I feel compelled to point this out because many students leave off the previous factors. Okay, so now we've completely factored F. Very nice. <coughs> Any question about... Uh, this exercise. Okay. <clears throat> so, how about... Completely factor f of x equal to 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus x plus 3. And now I'm going to add something foreboding. In C. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Right. So, what does that mean in C? Yeah, it means that if, it means that when in this factoring procedure, even if there are not real zeros, I still want you to proceed to the complex ones. Okay. <clears throat> so, what do we need to do? Yeah, the same thing we always do, right? So, the rational zero theorem candidates. Says that if there are any rational zeros, then it must be plus or minus a factor of three divided by a factor of three. This... Three in the top comes from this one. And the three in the bottom comes from this one. Okay. So then, <clears throat> what are the factors of three? One and three and in the denominator also 1 and 3. So now we need to take all possible combinations. So we could take the denominator to be 1, so that would be 1 and 3. And then we could take the denominator to be 3, so that would be 1 third and 3 thirds. And we should remove any duplicates now, so are there any duplicates? Very good. So plus or minus 1 3 
and a third. Okay, so then the rational zeros theorem is saying that if there are any rational zeros, it's got to be one of these six. It's got to be one of these six. So now what? Start guessing. And this is, questions like this are why one of the motivations that you need to be good at Horner scheme doing that table. Okay, because you've got to be able to quickly eliminate guesses. Okay. So what numbers, numbers go in the top row? Three, nine, one, three. Okay, 3913. And what number do you want to guess? I'm going to guess a third. Okay. So carry it down and then multiply, add, multiply. <laughs> 10 thirds plus 3 thirds is 13 thirds, 13 ninths, and this is 9 ninths plus 13 ninths is 22 ninths. So how about that? Oh, that's sad. What are we looking for? Zero. We're looking for zeros. Okay, so then there's, there were six possibilities, so I'll list them all out. So negative 1, positive 1, negative 3, positive 3, negative a third, positive a third. So you might be a little bit sad that this happened, but we did accomplish something. What did we accomplish? Yeah, one third is off the list. Okay, now there's only five possibilities. What do you want to guess now? Want to guess negative three? <laughs> okay. Well, just, just to prove a point, I'm going to try one. So one, it's usually a good idea to try one because it's the arithmetic is pretty easy. So three, nine, one, three. I'm going to try one. So then carry and then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Oh, so sad. Okay, so we, we eliminate another possibility. Okay, so the negative three, that sounds good. Okay. So three, nine, one, three, we're gonna try negative three. So then carry and then add, <coughs> or sorry, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Yay. Okay, so does everyone see? Ah, we, we, we guessed correctly on that attempt because we got a zero. Okay. <coughs> Therefore, we have established something. We have partially factored F. So what is one of the factors? X plus three. X plus three is one of the factors. What is the other factor? plus 0x plus 1. Okay, so those come from the fact that we tried negative 3, we got 0, and that tells us that x plus 3 is one of the factors. And this quotient is the other factor. Okay, so any question about getting to this position? Okay, so have we answered the question? Not yet. In what way have we not answered the question? Oh, sorry? We, we haven't done this, right? Yeah. So we need to finish factoring this. Okay. <coughs> So, this is a quadratic, and we know a lot of things about quadratics. So, in particular, if it, was, if it was just that, then it would be the standard quadratic, right? So, what does multiplying the standard quadratic by 3 do? Vertically. 
So that's going to, multiplying it by 3 makes it taller. Okay, then adding 1 to it like that, what does that do? That shifts it up. So in your mind's eye, imagine the standard parabola a little taller and shift it up. Does it cross, does it have any intercepts, x-intercepts? No, and therefore it doesn't have any zeros either because it's been lifted up above the x-axis, so it doesn't, have any, it doesn't have any zeros. What does that mean about, what does that mean about the real zeros? There aren't any. But if there, aren't, if there are not real zeros, then there could still be complex ones, which is why I said this. Okay, alternatively, here's a quadratic. What, yeah, we're going to do that in a, in a minute. Alternatively, we could, we could ask ourselves, Selves. Does does three x squared plus one have any have any zeros? And we can address it from a completely analytic point of view. So the geometric point of view is to say that well this is a this is a standard parabola shifted up. So no, it has no zeros. <coughs> but how can you address it analytically without geometry at all? You could you could, but there's a I'm fishing for a certain D word. Starts with a D. And ends with discriminant. <laughs> discriminant, right? So do you remember the discriminant? That is the vertex formula. B squared minus 4AC. Yes, B squared minus 4AC. The thing that's inside of the radical in the quadratic formula. Okay, B squared minus 4AC. Remember that when the discriminant is positive, there's two real roots. When the discriminant is zero, there's one repeated real root. And when the discriminant is negative, there's two complex roots. So, so what are A, B, and C for this quadratic? Three, zero, and one. Three, zero, and one. And what is B squared minus 4AC for this quadratic? Zero minus 12. Yes, zero minus 12, which is negative. So the discriminant is negative. So there's two complex zeros. Okay, so everybody's okay with that flashback to a month ago or whatever that was, I hope. Okay, so then let's factor this. So we can use uh, the quadratic formula, say. So, so remember the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So then in this specific exercise, that'd be negative 0 plus or minus square root 0 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1, or 4 times 1, yeah, no, 4 times 3 times 1, not that it matters, over 2a, or so 2 times 3. So x would be, so that zero goes away, <coughs> plus or minus square root 12 over 6. Well, the square root of 12 can be simplified a little bit. How does it get simplified? You can take out a 2, because 12 is 4 times 3. And so that 4 can come out of the radical as a, as a 2. plus or minus 2 square root 3. Ah, that should be negative. No one, no one, no one stopped me. <laughs> okay, so in the first place, let's do this in two steps. So in the first place, we need to deal with that negative. So how, I want to get the negative out. So how does that work? Yeah, how do I get the negative out of the square root? As I. So then this would be square root 12, and then i here, and then over 6. Now I'll do that thing that I said. <laughs> so this will be plus or minus 2 square root 3 i over 6. And then the 2 and the 3 cancel, or uh, the 3 that's with the 6. So that'd be plus or minus square root 3 over 3 i. So any question about getting to this position? 
Now, what does that tell us about the quadratic? I mean, what were we trying to do? We were trying to factor that quadratic. Now, we haven't factored it. What we did is we found its zeros. Okay, so then what we know is that the zeros of 3x squared plus 1 are x is negative square root 3 over 3i and x is positive square root 3 over 3i. But when, say, 5 is a 0, then what's a factor? x minus 5. And when, right, you just subtract it. So that means that 3x squared plus 1 must factor in this way. So one of the factors is x uh, plus square root 3 over 3i. And the other factor is x minus square root 3 over 3i. So this statement, as I have it written, is it correct? No, so, so not, not that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that mistake in a minute. No. <laughs> so what about this? Is this right? No, he's starting with 3x. Ah. Very good. So notice, the leading coefficient here is 3, and if you were to multiply this out, what would the leading coefficient be? 1. It would be 1. So to make this right, you have to put this 3 here. So this 3 is the result of this 3. And so therefore, f of x equal to x plus 3 times x squared plus uh, times blah, 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 blah. Times 3x squared plus 1. So we just got finished factoring this into that. So its factorization is x plus 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by x plus square root 3 over 3i multiplied by x minus square root 3 over 3i. I wonder if somehow we could get one more 3 in there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> so many 3s. Okay, have a nice Wednesday.